Today we're going to be cooking and trying 100 years of Christmas foods. Stay tuned for this one because we're going to have some unique dishes that you probably never heard of that we should definitely bring back to this decade. And we're going to rate each dish 1 through 10 bells. And I'm curious to know which year is going to get the highest rating. We're starting off at the 1920s. This is how Christmas dinner looked like and the cost of bread was only 10 cents. In the 1920s, sardines was really popular, specifically canned sardines. And people loved sardine canopy. It was one of the most famous and popular dishes at that time. And it's actually really easy to make. All it requires is some toasted bread that's cut up, some cream cheese that goes on there, and then the sardine goes on top of the cream cheese. Some people also like to smash in the sardines. And then lastly, you just finish it off with some cayenne pepper. As a Bengali, I love fish. However, we mostly eat fresh fish or like dried and cured fish. Not much of fish in a can. I can really spell the sardines here and it actually overpowers the cream cheese, but I hope this combination goes well together. And now for the taste test. Whoa, I did not expect that. That actually tastes really, really good. The sardine actually has like a really fishy smell, but when you eat it, it doesn't have that crazy fishy smell. It actually has a light fishy uh, smell or should I say taste in your mouth. So the fishy smell is good or great, but the taste is very mild. And that cream cheese and the bread just brings it all together. I'm actually very surprised by this one. That was actually so good, I'm gonna have a second one. Now out of 10 bells, I'm going to rate that at a 8.5 out of 10 bells. We're starting off high here, and now we're in the 1930s. This is how a family dinner looked like, and the cost of bread was eight cents, less than the previous year. In 1930s, mashed potatoes was getting popularized throughout the nation, and it was very, very simple to make, and it only required a few ingredients, potatoes, warm milk, some butter, and salt. That's it. Not even ground pepper was a part of it. It actually smells really, really good. Now for the taste test. Okay, I'm gonna have to admit something. I think I like this classic mashed potatoes better than the modern ones that we have. You know, because there's such little ingredients in here, you actually get to taste the potatoes. And that milk and the butter just adds a rich, creamy flavor to it. After this, I will have to say this is probably my top three ways to make mashed potatoes. Now the 10 bells, I'm going to give this a 9.2 out of 10 bells. Mm. So good. We're in the 1940s. This is how a Christmas family dinner looked like. And the cost of bread was 13 cents. In the 1940s, it was all about fruits and breads, specifically panettone. This is an Italian dessert, or should I say bread? It's in between a cake and a bread. It's actually kind of mixed together. It's one of the hardest things to bake. Trust me, just ask any baker. Now, people would actually line up outside of their local Italian store to pick one of these up. This bread slash cake had a mix of nuts and dried fruits in there. Listen, there is no way I was gonna make this panettone from scratch. In fact, in the 1940s, most people didn't make this. They actually picked it up from their local Italian stores. Now this panentoa, it's a mix between bread and cake. And when you initially open that box and you unwrap it, oh my God, it just smells so, so good. I can't even describe it. It smells fruity, but then it also smells like pound cake at the same time. And when I touch it over here, it's very soft, just like a bread, but then it has like a cake-like structure. So we're gonna bite into this and do a taste test. <laughs> Okay, so 
The sweetness really comes from the fruit that's in here. This cake slash bread, I, it's really hard to explain, but when it goes in your mouth, I mean, it almost like melts, but it's chewy at the same time. This is a very interesting structure. And I just have to say, um, maybe if there's different toppings inside, I might like it a little bit more, but out of 10 bells, I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10 bells. Okay, now we're in the 1950s. Christmas dinner looked like this, and the cost of bread was 12 cents. In the 1950s, Betty Crocker came out with a cookbook, and one of the dishes that was in there was cornbread, and she really popularized cornbread across America. Cornbread at that time was more of a Southern dish. And people love cornbread because it was a little sweet and savory at the same time. Now this is the classic cornbread. Cornbread has been innovating throughout time when it comes to the ingredients. People are adding cheese into it. People are adding meats into it. People are even adding garnishes like chives into it to make it taste even better. Now, personally, I love the corner piece of any type of cornbread. And if you're one of those people that love the corner piece, let me know in the comments. And if you're a person that loves the middle piece, let me know in the comments. Now, let's taste test this. It will get your mouth dry. <laughs> now, this is the classic cornbread. I mean, obviously, the newer innovative cornbreads taste better because you know, we adapted with newer ingredients and better tasting ingredients. But this classic one isn't bad. It's just very plain. It reminds me more of a pound cake. And when I took that initial bite, it actually did kind of dry my mouth. So if you have this, definitely have some gravy items to have it with. But out of 10 bells, I'll give this one a 5.2. Now I want to give a moment to give an honorable mention and it goes to plum pudding. Now I couldn't find this in any stores and I didn't have the proper ingredients to make this so I couldn't show it in today's video but plum pudding was really popular during the 1920s all the way to the 1950s. By the way if you feel like I missed something let me know in the comments below. Also I want to hear what's your favorite Christmas meal. We're going into the 1960s. And this is how Christmas dinner looked like. And the cost of bread was 23 cents. While shrimp cocktails were popular, shrimp relish was on the rise for popularity. Shrimp relish, I would say, is the upgrade version of shrimp cocktail. You're still getting the same cold shrimp, but now we're adding celery, olive oil, lemon, salt, pepper, and mayo. So I'm not really sure of the custom of eating the shrimp. I'm just using my fingers. I'm not actually sure if they had like forks or use some type of utensil for it, but we're gonna do our taste test. Mmm, whoa, okay. That combination of mayo, lemon, and that olive oil, whoa. <laughs> I did not expect that taste. That is a very, very unique taste. And I think I prefer this over regular shrimp salad. Now, out of 10 bells, I'm going to give this a 8.7. This was pretty high, this is pretty good. I already like shrimp to begin with, and this flavoring is a lot different than I ever had before. And now we're in the hippie era, the 1970s, and this is how Christmas dinner looked. And the cost of bread was 25 cents. In the 1970s, people were getting creative with their dishes, and this brought in the cauliflower surprise. And this dish is fairly simple to make. It's just cauliflower that's either been steamed or baked in the oven until it's really soft. And then you make the sauce mayo, mustard, and three different shredded cheeses. You mix all that together and you just lather it on the cauliflower. And then you bake that cauliflower again until it turns nice and golden brown. This smells really good. You get that cauliflower smell, and then you get that cheese and that mayo and that mustard smell all at the same time, which actually smells pretty good. Now, just like the name, I hope it surprises me. Whoa. <laughs> okay, okay. I see why they call it cauliflower surprise. That is actually a surprise taste. That mayo, that mustard, and that cheese is a wonderful mix. I should actually use that often in my cooking for other things. When you put that on top of the cauliflower, cauliflower already has flavor. But when it mixes with that, oh my God, that was really, really good. Now out of 10 bells, 
I'm gonna give that a 8.5. And now we're in the 1980s. This is how a family dinner looked like. And the cost of bread was 50 cents. This decade was the rise of gingerbread men cookies. And it wasn't because these cookies were really good. It's because it was a way for families to come together and do some sort of activity. You see these gingerbread men cookies, you would first bake them and then you would decorate them, putting on different clothes or giving them different types of smiles. It was a great family activity. Gingerbread man cookies have such a nostalgic smell to it because it reminds me of elementary school. You know, when you didn't have bills to pay and was stressful everywhere. <laughs> Hopefully this bite takes away my stress. Wow. Now it really doesn't have a ginger taste to it, but it reminds me of those butter cookies that you find in those tin cans that your grandma has, where you don't know if there's cookies in there or if there's a sewing kit in there. These cookies, it's gonna get a very high score. Out of 10 bells, I'm going to give this a 9.8. And now we're in the 1990s, one year after I was born. This is how the family dinner looked like. And the cost of bread was 70 cents. In this decade, crab cakes were getting really popularized and cooked in homes. Historians believe that crab cakes were actually a creation of the Native Americans and was one of the first dishes European colonizers adopted. And it's simply made with mayo, mustard, lemon, parsley, egg. And of course, you can't forget about the Old Bay seasoning. Clump it into burger shape, and bake until golden brown. If you guys don't already know, I'm from Maryland. And in Maryland, crab cakes are a staple dish. So let's try this classic one out. Listen, you just can't beat crabs. Crabs are like top tier, okay? And then you mix all that flavor in there and the Old Bay, I'm telling you, if you're making crab cakes without Old Bay, you really can't say you're making crab cakes. You're making another variation of crabs and maybe a patty, but you really can't say you're making crab cakes if you don't have Obey. This is absolutely amazing. And you know what? I'm going to give this, out of 10 bells, I'm going to give this 9.6. This was, I'm telling you, crab cakes, you can't beat it. You can't. Now we're in the 2000s and Christmas family dinners look like this. The cost of bread was $1. In the early 2000s is when America really started to get diverse. This is where you saw a lot of different ethnicities and cultures come together. I'm talking about everyone from Latino to Asians, to South Asians, to Middle Easterns. Everywhere across the world, there were a lot of Christians in America, but they were from different parts of the world and not all of them liked roasted ham or oven baked turkey. And we all know the universal meal is chicken. So this is when you started to see a lot of roasted chicken. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I need some hot sauce with my roasted chicken, okay? I'm gonna put some hot sauce on here and then we're going to do our taste test, okay? Here we go. Look, this is just a plain roasted chicken, okay? When I do roasted chicken, there's a lot of spices and there's a lot of other herbs and flavors I put in there. This is just a classic roasted chicken and the classic roasted chicken, it's okay. It's mainly just salt and pepper on there. Um, maybe some little bit of other seasonings, but it's not really flavorful. And if I didn't have the hot sauce, to be honest with you, I probably couldn't be able to eat this. So this roasted chicken out of 10 bells, I would give it a 1.8 out of 10 bells. We're in 2010 now. Christmas dinner looked like this. The cost of bread was $1.44. Now in the decade of 2010 is when you started to see a lot of potlucks happening at the offices, at homes, with friends, with families. People would bring in their own dish and they would have a party. So during this time, one of the most popular potluck items was actually sushi. And this is when sushi was getting really popularized in America. Out of all the dishes so far, this has been completely different. Let's try it. Classic sushi, okay? Can't go wrong. Mm. Still have it in my mouth. You can't go wrong with classic sushi, okay? Rice avocado, salmon. 
I mean, sushi itself, there's nothing I would change for that, okay? I didn't even use any soy sauce or wasabi for it because you just don't need it, okay? Sushi itself is so good. I mean, that is 10 bells out of 10 bells. I mean, there's nothing you can do to improve that, okay? Nothing. That is absolutely phenomenal. And now we're in today's decade, 2020. This is how a Christmas family dinner looks like. And the cost of bread is $1.50. Now in our decade, veganism is in full rise. And you start to see a lot of vegan options and vegan meals at almost every holiday dinner. And today we're gonna to be trying tofurkey, which is tofu, but it's has a turkey-like texture and it's supposed to mimic turkey taste. So let's see how it goes. <sighs> Honestly, this is tofurkey. It's not real turkey. It's tofu turkey. Let's try it out. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I'm sorry. I could. I'm. No, no. Out of 10 bells, this gets a negative 10 out of 10 bells, okay? This was not good at all. Oh my God. Okay, listen, it's so bad. You know these little ginger, uh, little ginger uh, pickles that come with um, the sushi? I'm gonna have to use these to clean out my mouth. Oh my God, that was so bad. Oh. See, tofu itself is good if you cook it in the right way. But if you're trying to make tofu taste like meat or something else and give it a whole nother texture, it's just not gonna work, okay? Tofu, just let it keep and stay as tofu. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Trust me, it means a lot to me.